This video is sponsored by Sleeping Duck. The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. This is my new queen size bed made from Tasmanian oak. I call this one the Shogun after its Shoji and Shinto style influences in the headboard design. It features some nice tapers on the legs. Uh, it's very chunky. This video is going to be more entertaining than educational, I suppose. Being the standard sort of 10 to 15 minute video that I do. However, there will be a two part that's much longer and goes into more detail. I started off by cutting the length of the leg segments, which would be the final height at 400mm. There were four segments per leg, so 16 all up. Next two of the segments per leg needed a notch. Half the notch was cut on the table saw as it was an important reference surface and the other and the other half on the band saw. The legs were laminated together in several passes. First the two notched pieces together, then the two unnotched pieces together, then the two halves together. This made it a little easier to keep all the parts from sliding along the length as I'd have trouble re-squaring that later on. To cut the jewel tapers on the legs, first I cut the meeting point as a cross cut on the bandsaw. Then I switched to a jig which will be covered in the two part in depth build videos. The jig let me cut the short tapers first, then re-index it to let me cut all the long tapers. The two tapers vary by about one and a half degrees. After cleaning up the cuts, the headboard and footboard rails were glued into the legs. Next, the cap pieces were ribbed, which feature a slight bevel to continue the angle of the legs. That same angle was taken to the miter saw and the headboard and footboard cap pieces were cut to length. The side rail cap pieces do not get this bevel. For the slats it worked out a little more economical to get tongue and groove flooring. I had the big box store cut them to a rough length which meant I was only charged for the material I walked away with, not the waste. Then I ripped off the tongue and groove and cut to length of the miter saw. To secure the slats I took another board and using the dado stack in my crosscut sled I nimbled away the waste. Then I could rip the board in three, two to attach to the side pieces and one to act as a central support. This way all the notches lined up perfectly. I glued the slat supports to a side rail using the appropriate sized spacer block. To attach the side rails to the headboard and footboards, I'm using an Australian invention, the Maxialock bed brackets. These are non-mortise brackets that attach together using high tensile socket head bolts. The placement for them is fairly fiddly, but with some careful measurements, it goes together fairly smoothly. On the rail side, it's fairly straightforward. A simple fence held it in the correct position while I drove the screws.
With the brackets on, I could then glue the cap pieces onto the headboard and footboard. I want to take a moment to talk about this video sponsor, Sleeping Duck. Sleeping Duck are a new Australian startup solving the common problems of the mattress industry. Rather than producing 50 different models that you get to try and install for maybe five minutes at a time, Sleeping Duck focus on making one great mattress, you just choose the firmness. Rather than trying it in store for five minutes, you take it home, sleep on it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it, they'll organise to take it away. One really cool feature is it's the only modular mattress in the world. Say you choose the wrong firmness when you have your 100 day trial, normally you'd have to replace the whole mattress, right? In this case, nope, you just undo a zip here, you take out this firmness layer and you can replace that at home. You also don't have to have an enormous chunky heavy bed frame like the Shogun. Uh, you can, the mattress has been designed so it'll work on any bed base or uh, trundle base, that sort of thing. The headboard that sits on top of the headboard cap and rail is going to be like a shoji screen. The outer screen is made from 60mm rails. Initially I was going to do traditional mortise and tenon instruction, but due to time constraints I opted to go with the domino. Check out episode 70 mortise and tenon coffee table if you'd like to see how to do it the more traditional way. The shoji screen's smaller elements come from the cap piece offcuts, so they needed to be thicknessed down to remove the bevel. I then went to the crosscut sled to cut all the small repetitive pieces. Half laps can be used for the joinery to attach all the screen pieces together. At about 13.5mm, it was easier just to do two passes with a half inch dado stack using a metal rule as a spacer. Before glue up and final tenon joinery was cut, the thin pieces needed to be stained. To get the colour that Natalie wanted, she first put on a coat of walnut, then a coat of ebony. The smaller vertical pieces are dominoed into the frame while the longer horizontal pieces are just glued into the half laps. Speaking of glue, as this was a very complicated glue up that took a long time to do solo, I did use a solo setting glue for this task and I opted to go with liquid hide glue as it's less messy and smelly than epoxy. The headboard is going to get a Tory gate like headpiece, which was cut from offcuts as well. Since it will be curved, the thickness only needed to be built up at the two ends. I then traced the half curve we wanted onto a thin piece of plywood to act as a template and cut it on the bound saw. The 
I can then smooth that out with a spoke shave and some sandpaper. Using my template, I could trace that onto the actual workpiece by flipping it over to get both halves. Then that was cut on the bandsaw. Again, I used sandpaper and a spoke shave to smooth out the bandsaw marks, then laid out the curves. I used a spoke shave to knock off the corners, then a rasp to refine the curves. To smooth everything up, I used bow sander and sanded to 220 grit. Once the headboard was dried, I could cut the 5 degree bevel on the bottom. This was a little hairy to be honest. To secure the headboard onto the bed, I created three brackets. These brackets were to wrap around the headboard rails. To cut the tapers on the brackets, I used my taper cutting jig from episode 60. The brackets won't be glued onto the main bed frame, but bolted on instead. First, the through hole was drilled with a 7mm bit, and then a larger bit to clear the head of the bolt. Once the brackets were glued onto the screen, I could then put it on the headboard piece and use a drill bit to mark out where I needed to drill for the thread of inserts. For the finish, we used a few coats of Danish oil from Organ Oil, an Australian company. Assembly is pretty straightforward. All the bolts use the same size Allen key and having the ball-headed Allen key made it really quick. Having a cat help, however, did not make it go any quicker. I didn't show the brackets for the central rail or the extra foot, but they'll be in the extended video. After all this, I'm exhausted and ready for a nap on my very comfy new bed and mattress. Thanks for watching.